What about this one, Auntie Fee? I examine the crimson maple leaf he's twirling in his fingers for my inspection. Oh, that's a great one, buddy. Definitely that one. Give it to Uncle Sloan to add to our keeper pile. My nephew is now an unbelievable seven years old. He is one of my favorite people to spend time with, which is high praise considering the awesomeness of my social circle. I glance across the leafy path between the trees of our sacred grove and breathe in the fey power snapping in the air. What about you, Maggie? Did you find anything you want to add to our end-of-summer celebration bouquet for Uncle Emmett and Brenny? Meg runs over to me, her cheeks flushed pink and her hands clutching an array of sticks, fallen acorns, and maple keys. These good? Wow, you guys really are amazing at this. Flopsy and Mopsy flutter by, wiggling their little cotton tails and waving their iridescent purple wings. They land over where we set out the sweet and salty smart food popcorn for them to munch on as a weekend treat. Pim came out to hang with us for a while, too, before heading back into their home tree to tend to baby Liddy. The warmth of summer is quickly receding. The end of our hot season is over like the flick of a switch. In Toronto, September can go one of three ways. It can still be warm, it can be autumn overnight, or it can cool down and give us one last burst of summer heat as a farewell tribute. Sadly, this summer, there was no last hurrah. As the season ended, it took its final bow and hit us with cool nights, turning leaves and the smell of people firing up their fireplaces instead of their backyard fire tables. Sloan and I missed the past two months, secluding ourselves in the joy of newlywed bliss. With the wells of our hearts and souls filled, we've pledged to reconnect with our lives and catch up with those we've neglected. A stiff September breeze whips a loose swath of auburn curls into my face. I straighten, trap it in my fingers, and tuck it back in my ponytail. What do you say, monkeys? Should we take the twins inside and get some hot chocolate and cinnamon rolls? Hells yeah! Jackson shouts, fist pumping the air. I bite my bottom lip to keep from laughing and try not to react. There's no helping it. Jackson is a cool through and through. His exclamation could have been much worse, considering all the hot-blooded Irish men in his life. Gathering the handful of nature bric-a-brac from Meg's clutches, I direct them back to where Dylan and Sloane sit in the rattan basket chairs playing with the twins, Ireland and Kara. Manx and Bruin act as furry barriers to keep the toddlers from escaping.